Thanks, uh, boys, uh, for your time. I mean, sitting here in the beautiful city center of Utrecht, uh, you walking down the stairs, is that maybe a moment where you get remembered what you achieved here last year? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we love to be here in uh, Utrecht. The city is uh, so beautiful and the, the arena down there is uh, amazing. So yeah, it's so fun to be here and, and to be able to play King of the Court. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just fantastic. We, we really like it here and uh, we definitely have some golden memories, you can say. <laughs> I mean, it's been last year where I actually uh, came to that moment where I thought like, okay, I'm on Helvig playing that quick set, very special style of beach volleyball, like the Swedish jump set version. And King of the Court, this is a perfect fitting. Do you agree on that or are you just using this format to perform better on your way to the Olympics? Yeah, I, I don't know. We, we thought like before we tried to play King of the Court for the first time, uh, before it was going to be too difficult for us to play the jump sets and stuff because everyone goes hard in the serve here. Uh, so we, yeah, we were thinking oh, it's going to be hard to like receive the ball good enough to do the jump sets and everything. Uh, but it's been working so well for us here and I uh, think it's uh, more difficult for, for the teams to like put up a strategy against us but when yeah, you play so many teams uh, and we play differently it's, it's hard to like yeah, get used to it like yeah, maybe you do in a, in a normal game. Yeah. As I follow uh, especially the social media figures with the highlight clips with the knuckle set or everything that is like particular your style do you already see that the world of beach volleyball is somehow copying or using your in invention of playing it a different way, maybe the Swedish way? Uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of the teams are trying to to switch it up and to be more creative with the sets and with the, with attacks. Uh, we like to play fast and to <laughs> to yeah, run across the court so make it hard for the other teams. So I think uh, m more and more players are, are trying to do the same. Yeah, um, I mean, finishing uh, or watching your career so far in the juniors level, you almost won all titles that you have to win. So uh, the world of Beach was more or less expecting your breakthrough the beginning of this season. You won here last year and you made a couple of main draws last, last year. Then the Olympics came quite too early. but. Um, how do you see the performance at the very beginning of the season? And how difficult was it for you as you got uh, injured at the very early season? Yeah, I think we did we did well at the beginning of the season. We had uh, a good tournament in Mexico, uh, and then uh, we won in Turkey the the challenge event. So that was like the first big uh, win on the pro tour for us. Uh, and then right before the world champs, I injured my hand. So that really really sucked because we we felt like we were in good shape uh, we had a good ranking and we were so excited to play uh, but yeah that, that happens and w when it healed and when i came back we we got to practice a lot uh, uh, before the european championship yeah I, I could read it in a social media post that actually in that moment i read it i felt so much with you like you were so ready as you mentioned you won the tournament before and you can't be more ready than this. Tell me about that, that feeling actually to decide not playing with your partner and not making it to Rome as you, as you wish for? No, it was, it was devastating, really. Uh, <laughs> we, we didn't know, like, when you injured your hand, we didn't know how bad it was. Uh, so we had to, do, like, do an x-ray and see, see how it was. So we were, like, waiting for the results. And I thought, no, it's okay, we're going to be able to play. Maybe it's, it will be a bit difficult, but we'll still go and play. So when we got the results and they said, no, it's broken, you can't play, it was oh, just devastating, really. Yeah. I can imagine with the special way of playing, it, it is so much training with these uh, quick passes, then the quick set. How difficult is it to exchange a partner? I know it, it's not always easy in general, but even with the version of the Swedish jump set, it makes it even more difficult to have a partner who runs the same set, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's much more difficult. Uh, luckily for me, it uh, we, we had uh, we have been practicing a bit with some younger guys, uh, trying to teach them the Swedish jump sets and stuff as well. So they have like the same concept, having 
trained by Rasmus and Anders before. Uh, so I played the uh, under-22 European Championships instead of the World Champs then with, uh, uh, with uh, Jacob from, from Sweden. Uh, and we managed to win actually, so, so that was really nice. Uh, but he also jump sets and plays fast and stuff, so it was nice. It, w it worked well, but of course we had to like, yeah, uh, get it to work better together. The first time it wasn't perfect, but we got better and better. Yeah. Thank God there was a second highlight this season forecasted with the European Championships. H how quick have you been uh, having your eyes on, on that moment in Munich uh, after deciding not playing in Rome? And uh, yeah, tell us about that feeling, about that week, what you achieved in, uh, in Munich. Uh, yeah, well, w we had a few, few weeks to practice before and we got to play the Swedish Championship the week before Munich. Uh, but like I wasn't in the best shape because I <laughs> hadn't played for a long time, so we felt like, ah oh, shit, this is uh, don't know how this is gonna go. And then from the start in Munich, uh, the first game uh, we played really well, and then managed to just keep improving and getting more consistent with the sets and and everything. Uh, and then the, like in the end we played like as good as we have ever played before. So yeah, that was. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, would you would you rank that after a couple of wins in your career as the yeah the most important, the biggest win so far as you uh, as, a, as a team? Yeah, the European Championships was definitely the biggest thing we we've ever won. It was yeah incredible. <laughs> um, tell me about that that key moment uh, as I followed it and I. I was down there on center court, but I have just seen you performing from uh, semi-final onwards, right? So, um, tell me about the, the sideline atmosphere, uh, side court action there, uh, probably a couple of thousand people very, very close to that. I mean, how, how was that for you? Was it like that, that extra motivation to, to kick back as you struggled in the group phase against Anders and Christian? And then facing them twice. I mean, there is this rule that you never lose twice against a team in beach volleyball. No, it was uh, yeah, like you said, we we lost to them in the, in the group stage, and uh, but we were really close in the first set, and I think that was really good for us to know that uh, it's it's possible. We know it's possible. We can play close, uh, and uh, yeah, we were just trying to like uh, don't hit too much into Anders block and play our style and believe in it and just have fun and yeah do our thing and uh, yeah we played really really well in the semi-final and it was a close game but we we managed to win and it was just incredible and uh, like you said the, the arena and everything around it it was just incredible uh, <laughs> like I think the fans were a bit on our side as well so <laughs> That was really nice. It really gives you an extra boost on court. Like, to, yeah, hit the ball into the sand and hear the crowd cheering and stuff. It just gives you more energy. Was that maybe for you a little bit of that credit as the season started that bad with that injury, uh, not making it to Rome? Uh, yeah, after the European Champs, it everything felt much better, of course. <laughs> like, uh, I didn't think much about missing the World Champs when we managed to win in Munich. So uh, yeah, it was a, a like uh, a very good, very good comeback, <laughs> and uh, yeah. How was I celebration in, in Sweden? How, uh, did, yeah. how did you manage that? Did you party out, or did you just go for the next session? I can imagine <laughs> that there was a little bit of a party. Yeah, yeah, there was a bit of a celebration uh, the day after. Uh, we had a very good dinner with uh, some people from the Swedish Federation. Then we went out and saw a lot of friends, and there were like a lot of people from the beach volleyball community in Sweden who who came and wanted to celebrate with us and wanted to meet us. So yeah, that was so fun. <laughs> so after celebration, there was probably the eye on on Utrecht as a highlight and the end of the FRB season. Um, do you already feel that something has changed? I mean, now you are maybe definitely one of the best teams in the world. You proved it as a European champion, so you are the team to beat. You, you are a champion over here. The CV tournament is the last one that you won. Do you see that teams looking to you different? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> actually. I feel like... <laughs> We always just want to do our best every practice and of course we have improved a lot in the last year 
Um, so I think a lot of teams think it's difficult to play against us because we have this different style. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the session yesterday. I, I think you scored around 50 points in 45 minutes. That's a big achievement. I can't confirm it's a record, but uh, watching and seeing you play, also like taking the overcome of Clemens Wickler and his partner Sachstetter here, um, how much th was that like the perfect session? I I've seen you smiling with a golden ball at the end. You can use it tonight. Uh, was that the perfect entrance to uh, come back here to Utrecht? Yeah, we played really well. It, it was so fun. Uh, and especially when you manage to get some points in the beginning, you can just relax and you don't have to stress as much and just play our game. So uh, I think the second round we had an 11 point run uh, from the start. So after that we were a bit tired of course because we had a lot of jumps and a lot of attacks. Uh, but yeah. After that you can just, just relax, just have fun, enjoy the, the arena and the and the crowd here. Yeah. Um, as you are qu quite experienced with this format, is there this crucial situation at the King of the Court uh, session that you play? I see many teams like in the first five minutes struggling to use their chances to get at least a couple of points, to get on scoreboard, not staying with zero. Is that something you are aiming for? Maybe a key moment at the King of the Court? Yeah, I think it's really important to like give it your all from the start so you can yeah get on the board that's like the first thing get at least one point so you're on the board uh, because a lot of teams are struggling in in the first yeah five minutes it's it's really tough and when you get over there you, it's hard to find a rhythm you can't really <laughs> get into it uh, so uh, you have to like yeah you're really focused and okay now we're on the king's side we gotta score some points now we have to be focused so yeah I think that's really important before your session there was a kind of a hitting contest down here on center court how much did you enjoy that even comparing with the the, the Swiss guy Heidrich who is probably known as one of the hardest hitters uh, did you train that in Sweden <laughs> no no we, we haven't really been practicing it uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was really fun of course uh, it was uh, a nice idea I've never tried it before with the floor on the in the sand, it was yeah, it was super cool. Uh, but of course, it's uh, it's a bit difficult. We we haven't been practicing like attacking from the middle and trying to hit, yeah, like at <laughs> at a floor <laughs> and trying to bounce it as high as possible. It's, uh, it's different, but it was so much fun. Yeah, I've been watching into your coach's box yesterday and thought that your coach Razi is with you. But uh, there's someone looking, looking like a typical Swedish coach. But it's it's not Razi, right? No, Can it, you confirm? It's it's Passy. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's uh, our friend from uh, from Sweden. Uh, he, there was this uh, like costume party thing. Uh, uh, they had a they have a costume uh, tournament uh, during uh, almost during the Swedish championships uh, in Tillsund. Uh, where they had a team that was Team Rassi, so everyone had uh, yeah, dressed up as like Rassi with the hair and cap on and everything. So, so he brought his wig to <laughs> to look like Rassi. Here. It's gonna be our coach, you know. I mean, actually, he fooled me, and it worked out. So, uh, looking forward for the next days, what uh, what are you aiming for? Is that something like a phase in the season where you just want to stay, enjoy the atmosphere, here, or? Are you looking back to that wonderful moment, getting actually the coat, getting the crown, and how much would it uh, rank for you in this season, which has been so golden, to win another time here in Utrecht? Yeah, of, of course we want to do everything to to win it, and we will try to play as as best as possible e every session. So, and I think we have a quite a good chance, but there's a lot of really good teams here, and in King of the Court, it's it's always difficult uh, it's uh, like everything can happen some good teams may go out and, and there will be a lot of surprises uh, in King of the Court so yeah it, it's uh, it's difficult but we will definitely do everything we can to win it